Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> My name is Ryan Lancio. I'm a developer at OpenGov. Um, I have two daughters. Uh, I try to convince them that programming stuff's cool, kind of subtly. Um, I don't know if, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, so I don't know. That might have been too subtle. I don't know if, um, but anyways, I'm here tonight to talk to you about Griddle. Um, it's a data grid component for uh, for use with React. Um, at my last job. We were doing a proof of concept to kind of determine what uh, front end technology to use. Um, I was into using React. There were a, a lot of awesome choices. But one of the things I kept running into is to use something that was pure React, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. So, um, and you see that it's t of 2014. Um, I was like, oh, I'll go home and write this and be done with it. And here we are two years later, um, and uh, still not a 1.0. Semver. Uh, so anyways, oops. So we're going to get into some examples. Uh, don't copy the kind of code that we're doing here because some of it is not very performant or nice. Um, but let's say we have an array of data. I don't really care how we're getting it. Let's just say an API. And it looks a little something like this. We can say with, um, that we want to render um, a Griddle component with that data. And we get this. Um, this is all local. All the states manage local. It's not going back and forth to a server. Um, there's ways to do that, but right now we're just looking at all locally. Um, so we can sort and filter just right out of the box. Um, but it didn't look very nice. I mean, especially if we're getting, depending on how we're getting our data back from the API, it could be doing something like Rails where we're using like snake case or something. Um, and we wouldn't want to display that to our users. So um, we have this way to say like, I want, to, I want to define a column by specifying the ID, and I want it to, the title to appear like this. So uh, right here, we're applying the display name of title and status. And we're saying, let's ignore the ID. I don't want to display that to the user. Um, and so if we go to the next example, um, so there we have the, the title and the status. Um, but the next thing we want to do is, this still isn't a very nice display. We want to give some kind of visual indication as to um, the, what the status means. Um, and we want to create another React component. And I'm sorry for those of you that don't use React in here. I, this is very React-y um, and more of a here's, here's what we can do with this, but not necessarily a how. So um, uh, anyways, so we're going to create a React component. And uh, that was my disclaimer. Um, and this is a functional React component. We're going to pretend that this thing in the comments with the ellipses um, is just kind of magic. but we want to say that we want to have something that, um, determ that determines a, a different kind of color to display for our um, column, for our status column. And um, we'll wrap that in the span. So at the very bottom here, we re are returning a span with a style of style. Um, yes, inline styles. And, um, we, uh, and then we're rendering our data. Um, and. Here we get this. We, have the st we still have the same um, sorting and filtering capabilities. Um, oh, yes, and sorry. Um, we can pass that in as another property um, with a custom component of status, and that's just a standard React component. So the next thing we want to do is say, OK, I want to make my table display like something other than a table. Um, this is an alpha 1.0 version that we're, we're going over right now, and there's a lot of the safeguards to prevent um, uh, bad things from happening aren't there. Um, but let's say we wanted to render this as a list instead of um, a table. Um, this is still actually rendering as, as a table, but we could use divs instead. Um, but we can say we want to only show um, the, the, the data where the status is not equal to finished. And we want to pass in a different component to render as the row. Um, this components property will override anything that Griddle uses by default to say, I want to replace row with this to-do row. Um, and so in this to-do row, I've added some events and some other things to, to modify the status. Um, and then also, um, we're passing in the data a little differently. Um, if we look at this here, um, if we go to this last one, they're sharing the same state. So we have this market Grove Street. Um, so we want to check this one off. This to-do item is done. Um, and if we go back here, um, this Market Grove Street one um, is now marked as finished. 
Um, so it's just still using the same table, but um, but I, I'm passing in a custom component. Um, so one of the last things, let's say we wanted to use a chart instead. I've had a lot of times where I was building um, like a reporting application where I was finding that um, the, the things that I was displaying for my charts were the same things as my um, tabular data. And so um, with this, again, this is not very performant, so don't um, <laughs> copy this style anywhere. But um, here we're, we're using a library called Chartist, and we're passing, um, we're creating this chart component that also takes data, and we're saying render this, um, here we're saying instead of a table, render this chart component that we just created. And since we have this mechanism for uh, state management and other things like that, um, here we're displaying a bar chart that has all the to-do items by status. But let's say we wanted to find ones that have st space in the name. Um, there's one that's in to-do and one that's in finished status. Um, so this is at, uh, yeah, the, the name Griddle for the organization was taken, so we went one step better and went griddle griddle.github.io. <laughs> Um, and then you can go slash griddle slash next um, to get the documentation. If that next isn't there, um, you'll get the old documentation. Um, well, I shouldn't say old, the, the current documentation. Um, and thank you. <laughs>